Okay, brother, you had questions about the Trinity. What? What? Me, yeah. I'm Ronin. Ronin. Yeah. Are you a Christian yourself? Yeah, yeah I'm a big fan. I've okay. Been for a long time. Yeah. What's your questions about the Trinity? Yeah, I'll get them up. I've got quite a few. There you go. Oh, thank you. Um, so one is um, so there's three members of the Trinity, right? And are they all separately conscious, or do they share one consciousness, or is there not an uh, opinion on that? So, in terms of like the deep philosophy of the Trinity, you're going to reach points where I'll have to give qualified answers. Right, okay. The Father, Son and Holy Spirit share one will. So when they act, it's not that the Son is acting on His will and the Father is acting on His will and the Holy Spirit is acting on His will. It is that they have the one will, but each of them embody that one will and each of them express that one will through their own activity and as an, an analogous statement to that I would say that there is one consciousness but that one consciousness is embodied in the Father the Son and Holy Spirit in their activities as Father Son and Holy Spirit so an example of that would be the Father wills creation the Son creates and the Holy Spirit gives life the act of creation is not complete until there is life. It's one act. It's one event. But each of the persons is doing a different part of that act in accordance with the one will. That makes sense. Um, is, what, why is the Holy Spirit added as a third Godhead? Like, where is the evidence for that? So, the Holy Spirit is not added. The Holy Spirit is there in Genesis. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, or verse 2, it says that after God had created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, that the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. So the, the idea of the Spirit of God is right there in the first verse. Now, the Spirit of God is the Spirit of God, which means now you've got two things right there God and the Spirit of God and, and you see as you go forward reading about the Spirit of God in the Bible that the Spirit of God is another person of the Divine Trinity so in the book of Acts I think it's chapter 4 it says that people lied to the Holy Spirit they lied to God yeah I, so for me I believe in the Gospels and I, I love Jesus and I base my faith on the Gospels maybe. Yeah. But I'm not necessarily so sure about how accurate or inerrant or how much truth is in the rest of the Bible. So maybe it made more sense to have a discussion about whether or not um, Paul can be trusted as a, a good source, talking about how the Godheads work and all that. All right, that well, but, but firstly, I quoted um, Acts and Acts is written by Luke. It's not written by Paul. I quoted Genesis. Genesis was written by Moses, was not written by Paul. But in Genesis it's not a separate person. But my Just, point, uh -huh. well, well, actually if you read the Torah, the Spirit of God is understood as giving His Spirit, doing things in the people of Israel, descending on, on people. The, the Spirit of God, in, as you read the whole of the Bible, because we don't take some verses, yeah. we take all the verses. And when you read all the verses, you can't get away from the fact that the Spirit is a person. So for instance, now I'm quoting Jesus. Jesus says, I shall pray to the, the Gospel of John, chapter, uh, in chapter 14 to 16. Jesus says, I shall pray to the Father that he send you another advocate. An advocate is someone, do you know what an advocate is? Like someone that's advocating, like a helper. Yeah, helper. Advocating between one party and another party. You've got to be a person to be an advocate, haven't you? Yes. Right, so Jesus says, I will pray to the Father and he shall send another advocate, the Patumater Zalertheos, the Spirit of Truth, the Agios Panuma, the Holy Spirit. So Jesus says, the Holy Spirit is another advocate. So I've just quoted Moses, Jesus and Luke that all demonstrate that the Holy Spirit is divine and another person. You say like angels are persons. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so, are you saying there's good reason to believe that when it says that God's spirit is over over his creation, Genesis, yep. that that's the same spirit as the advocate that Jesus is talking about? The Holy yes. Spirit? Yes. Where can we find that? Or like, so, so, so the way to think about it is this, right? Jesus was a Jew, was he not? Yeah. So when he talks about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, right? Because he says the Holy Spirit comes from the Father, right? When he says that, as a Jew, which spirit do you think he's talking about? It's going to be the, the spirit of the Old Testament, that the Old Testament is talking about. So it's about using your reason to understand that when Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit, he can't be speaking about a Holy Spirit that's just invented. It has to be a, a, the Holy Spirit that is rooted in Judaism. And the only Holy Spirit that we hear referenced in the Psalms of David is the Spirit of God where David says, and do not, Lord, take your Holy Spirit from me. So now I've quoted Moses, David, Jesus, Luke, and all of them are showing that the Holy Spirit is of God and that the Holy Spirit is a person. Okay. So do we definitely know that Acts was written by Luke? Yes. And then where can I find, because I'll, I'll look into this stuff and uh, come back every time. Yeah. Um, where can I find, I, I'll find it actually. Jesus talking about what, what, what's your question? I was going to say, where, where, Jesus talking about the helper, but I know where that is. It's in John it. 14 to John 16. Okay. Do you want to go through it? Um, yeah, could be. Yes, of course. Yeah. Now, my point to you is, bro, is that as a Christian, I want you to encourage you to embrace the fullness of all Christian truth. Right? I'd love to believe in the Trinity. Yeah, and I'm going to show you. It's not nice to have that, to not be uni unified with my yeah. Christian brothers and sisters. Well, I, I, I want to say to you, brother. I put the truth above. So, but if I yeah. can find it now, I'd love to believe in it. I, I want to say to you, brother, that if clear evidence is presented to you and you reject the Trinity, you, you end up excluding yourself from the, the community of faith. Right? So, it's incumbent upon you to examine the evidence in all seriousness, right? So when we look about what Jesus says about the Holy Spirit, let's start in John 14, right? I, I've got it here. Yeah, I just, for a lexicon. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. That's the word, do you know? No. In, in Greek, parakletos. Okay. Parakletos can also be translated as advocate. Okay. Now, what's a helper? Someone that helps. Yeah. Is that a person? Um... I mean, normally, but you, you could anthropomorphize something to be a helper, yep. not a helper, like a True. doctor or True. something. True. And what's an advocate? Because it can also be translated as advocate. Something that, like, someone that advocates. Is that a person? Um, I mean, like, a sign could advocate, but it's like an anthropomorphized... Right. No, I, I think that's... Oh, you'll, you'll see later you're going to fall into problems. Okay. Because the Holy Spirit is all dis also described as teaching. Okay. I mean... A book can teach. Yes, mm -hmm. a book can teach, but does someone write the book? Is yeah. it their knowledge, or is it the book? Does the book have knowledge of itself, or did someone write the book? Um, someone wrote the book. Right, but it could be like God's. Yeah, like knowledge. Channel. So, God. so, and when we when we start piling on these descriptions, mm -hmm. some point you're going to have to accept that it is a person. Okay. Right. So he describes the spirit as an a parakletos, an advocate, a helper, that he may be. He also, the pronoun, he, he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of the truth, Panumater Zalertios, whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and is in you. Okay. Right? Are we off to a good start? Yeah. Jesus goes on and he says, these things I have spoken to you while abiding with you, but the parakletos, the agios panuma, the helper, the advocate, the Holy Spirit. So now he's named who the parakletos is, the Holy Spirit. Okay. Right? David speaks about this Holy Spirit in his, in his Psalms. He says, Lord, don't remove your Holy Spirit from me. So now we've got that the Old Testament names the Holy Spirit and the New Testament names the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is obviously talking about that Holy Spirit. Okay. Right? So we've established that, yes? 
Uh, yeah, I have to look into it, look at the, read the Greek, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I, I can, I'm, tell, I'm literally giving you the Greek as I read it. No, I know, but I just, I just mean like I want to sit down and read it. I'm reading the Greek to you as I read it, no, but I we'll know, continue. But I just want to look at where, right? the Greek where it shows up in other parts of the Bible. Right, it goes on. Uh -huh. But the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Uh -huh. So now he's an advocate. He is the Holy Spirit and he is a teacher. Uh, are we making a case? Yeah. Do you see the point? He, so he's teaching you all things and he will bring to your remembrance. So he's now a reminder. So he's an advocate, he's a teacher and he's a reminder. At some point you've got to, does a book remind? Yeah. Through your activity. When you read a book to remind you of something like we're doing with the Bible, um, that's our activity. But the, it's saying that the Holy Spirit reminds you. So it's his activity that is you're participating in. He is reminding you. Okay. Like I am re teaching you now the scripture. The, I, I am teaching you from the scripture and the scripture is teaching you, but I am teaching you the scripture. Yeah. You see the point? Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Goes on, right? It says in, we're in chapter 15 now. When the Parakletos comes, the helper, whom I will send to you from the Father. So this is confirming that the Holy Spirit is from the Father, which is what David said, and it's what Moses said, and it's what Luke said. Yeah? Yeah. Right? From the Father, that the Panumater Zalertios, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. So now the Holy Spirit is a witness. What does proceed mean? What? What would proceed mean? Means to flow from, to come from, like a water, like a, 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 a um, like a water fountain. A, a river proceeds from a fountain. Would that mean that before creation, the Holy Spirit wasn't like a separate? N no, we Christians believe that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father eternally, because there's no change in God. He doesn't change, and so the Holy Spirit proceeds eternally. He was proceeding when Jesus said this, and he's proceeding now. And he will proceed if we are still here in a thousand years. And he will proceed when time stops. He will still proceed. It's outside of time. Because the Father is outside of time. So that which proceeds from the Father is outside of time. But if it proceeds, would the Father not be like causally before the... Yes, as Christians, we affirm that the Father is causally the source and origin of the Son and the Holy Spirit. But this is something that happens outside of time. Yeah, temporal, it's intemporal, it didn't start, it doesn't end, and it is going on right now. Okay, that makes a lot more sense, because that's not how I understood people describe it. Yeah. yeah, okay. But now, look at the descriptions of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is an advocate, the Holy Spirit is a teacher, the Holy Spirit is a witness, and the Holy Spirit is a reminder. At some point you've got to say this is a person yeah. that's being described. Yeah. Right, so now I have demonstrated yeah. to you that the Holy Spirit is a person. Let's move on. Goes on, in, now we're in chapter 16. Okay. Jesus says, But I tell you the truth, it is for your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper, the Paracleton, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you, and he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness. So now, he is the, he is the convictor. He is someone who brings to people's attention their sin. So he is a teacher, he is a reminder, he is an advocate, he is a witness, and he is a convictor, a judge. Is this a person? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there we go. We've established that the Holy Spirit is a person. Yeah. Next question. Um, so, so yeah, when we talk about Jesus being God. Yep. And so where would we, where can we find Jesus being God? Right. So Jesus calls himself in Revelations. And if you want me to show you any of these verses, I'll show them to you. But it's up to you. Like, you can either take my word for it and ask me to show you, but it's either up to you. But I'll get quicker through this answer if you take me on faith and just 
study it. But if you want me to, I'll show you. Jesus says, I am the first, I am the last, I am the beginning, I am the end. What comes before the first? What comes before the beginning? What comes after the last? What comes after the end? Who's that a description of? Something eternal. Something eternal. So if Jesus says this about himself, he's giving himself a divine description, agreed? Yeah, so one of the things that I have trouble with is for, it seems like it could be possible that, like, because, you know, the Greek idea of the Logos, is a Greek philosophical idea of, like, rationality. Yeah, and, like, yeah. That the Logos could just be God and part of God, and then the Logos becomes its own person whenever Jesus was created, and then after everything's done, that Jesus would like merge back in with God and they become one person again. Okay. That's, and, and then another thing is... Right, so let me address yeah, that yeah. point. But because in your, in your argument, in your understanding, which in love I say to you is deficient, but in your argument, in your deficient understanding, there is actually enough of, of what you've just said for you to acclaim Jesus as divine. I believe Jesus is divine. All right, well, one, so, one second. So, because... Does, does the, is God ever without his word? Is he ever without his attributes? If Jesus is the word of God and God is eternal, is his word eternal? Um, is God ever without his attributes? No. If Jesus, is, is his word one of his attributes? Yeah. Is Jesus clearly described as the word of the Father? Therefore, is Jesus eternal? The Word is eternal, and Jesus embodies the Word. Right. But can Jesus fade away from the Word? Right. Still? So, let's actually look at that in Scripture. Because okay. in John chapter 1, the very question you're asked is addressed. Do you know John chapter 1? Yeah. Right. So it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made by Him, and nothing in the whole of creation was made without Him. He is the light of the world, the life. Sorry, He is the life of the world. The light that shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehendeth it not. That's a description of Jesus. Yeah. But then it says... Uh, it's it's of the, the Word. Yes, the Word. Then look what it says later. And the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we saw his glory, the glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. That's why I had to put it there. So what, so what, yeah. So what? Ha, what's happening there, the Word... The word that where it goes on, that he dwelt amongst us, begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, where it says, For a fullness we have all received, and grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, but the truth were realized through Jesus Christ. Where is it that he dwelt amongst us? Bear with us. Yeah, because he says, right. So speaking of the same person that's become flesh, John says this, For he existed before me has a higher rank than I. So John is saying he has become flesh, but he has existed before me. So it's saying that the, the word was a person that existed before him and took on flesh. And well, that's what we Christians believe. When Christ becomes man, it's not that the divinity changes into humanity and ceases to be divinity. It is that the divinity takes to himself a humanity without changing what he is. So the humanity is kind of separated by an invisible wall. But the person fully possesses that humanity like he fully possesses his own divinity. And this you see in the Council of Ephesus and the Council of Chalcedon. Can't there be a period before John but at the start of creation and after God where Jesus becomes the Logos? Where Jesus is well, the, the, the Logos means Word. Uh -huh. And the Word of God doesn't become the Word. It is the Word. But if the Word of God is the, the divine attribute, then therefore it's eternal. Uh -huh. But there's more to Jesus than just the Logos. He's also a, a, like he became human. Yes, and that's what I'm saying. He takes to himself flesh. It's like if you build a house and enter into it, or you build a tent. The term, the term tabernacle in the Greek Right? He tabernacled amongst us. Means that he enters into a tent. This is what it means, that he took on flesh, that he became flesh. He veiled himself in flesh. That's what we believe. I understand. So he, it's not that he ceases to be the divine Logos, 
he, be he is the divine Logos veiled in flesh. Brother, I'm going to come and find you after I finish speaking with this guy. So if you want to find your friend and let her know I'm coming soon. But I still, it still seems to me that it's possible that... Right, okay, one second. You said it's possible. The question is, is that what Christianity teaches? Because the thing is, just because there is a possibility of something doesn't mean that it's true. I agree. It, there is a possibility that the universe is a flat universe. Uh -huh. There's a possibility that it's a, a, a concaved universe. It's a possibility that it's the opposite. I forget what the opposite is. Yeah. Like universe. There's lots of possibilities, but the question is which one is true? And when it comes to metaphysics, there's lots of possibilities, but the question is what does the Bible teach? And the Bible isn't teaching the alter, your possibility because John himself says, Speaking of Jesus at the Incarnation, this is when he's pointing to Jesus in the flesh. And he says, he who comes after me, which is identifying therefore it's incarnational, he who comes after me, because John was born before Jesus, he who comes after me has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. But Jesus could have become flesh before he was on earth. But Not the point is, flesh, it's the Jesus same Christ. person. The Logos is a person. The person of Jesus Christ is the Logos, and he existed before John, but at the incarnation, he comes after John. And John is saying, he who came after me is of a higher rank than me because he came before me. So he's talking about the same person all the way through the transaction. But you can, but no, you can't. Show me how you can fit what you're saying into here. Well, because before John, as in before Jesus became incarnated on this world. Is he a person? Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Right, so we're talking about the same person, right? But there can still be a period where you have Logos, the Logos becomes Jesus and Jesus is now made. Right, and is, then you have creation. is the Logos a person? Yeah. Well, and is person. that person the one that John is referring to? The Logos became a person. No, the, the, the Logos was a person. Suddenly so became flesh. The Logos was a person in the Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, okay. uh -huh. you have the teaching about the angel of the Lord. Do you know what the angel of the Lord is? No. The angel, what do you know what an angel is? Yeah. An angel is a messenger, isn't it? Yeah. That's what the word angel means. Okay. I'm not going to try and say it in Hebrew, yeah, right. right? I think it's Micaiah or something, but I might be getting that utterly wrong. But it means messenger. So the angel of the Lord is described in the Old Testament as being divine. So the angel of the Lord is the pre-incarnate references to Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord, let me show you that the word of the Lord is a person in the Old Testament. Yeah, really so in, the, in Genesis, in Genesis, Bear with us. Right. So in Genesis chapter 15, it says this. After these things, the word, what word? The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Do not fear Abraham, Abram. I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be very great. So the word is seen by Abraham and speaks to Abraham. So the word of the Lord is a person. The word of the Lord in John is a person. So Jesus is that word. You all right, bro? Yeah. You're good? Yeah. I've been trying to find out for a long time. Yeah, you got it? <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Yes, verse. absolutely. What's the verse? Uh, Genesis 15. Genesis 15. Here's some tissue. Genesis 15, verse 1. Right? God bless you, brother. Right? Here, let me give you a gift. Right? I want to help you. Get in touch. Right? This has been emotional for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So go have a coffee and relax. Thank you very much. Peace be with you, brother. Yeah, God bless. God bless you.